Hey there, my name's Deandra, and I originally hit Grandmaster during 2017 in Overwatch 1, but for the final year of the first game's lifespan, I didn't play that much comp. Half of it was that queue times had gotten really bad, and the other half was that playing 2CP just made me miserable. When Overwatch 2 came out though, I really wanted to get back into things once everything seemed stable. I didn't want to just jump into comp on my main account though, partially because during the betas I was getting recognised a lot and people kept being weird to me, and secondly, I knew I was going to be really rusty. Primarily playing quick play can really do a number on your reaction time and awareness since you just get away with so much more. In the end, I named an alt account Mercy to hide in plain sight, and it started Overwatch 2 in high gold. Now, over the course of two seasons, I have pulled it all the way up to Grandmaster 2, basically doing an unranked GM in the process. Now, if you aren't familiar with my channel, I do a lot of educational Mercy content, and I try to make it very snappy and to the point. However, this video is going to be a lot more relaxed, way more rambly. Basically, I want to give some advice, but also thoughts and observations as well. Alright, so my number one tip for Mercy, in her current state at least, is to be flexible. So personally, I try to get into a gameplay loop of hard pocketing a DPS with damage boost, usually either Sojourn, Cassidy, Soldier, or Ash. Generally, I'll heal the DPS unless I know or can see my other support handling it, especially if it would force me to reposition. As for the tank, I'll try to ignore them when they aren't critical unless I need health. When they are critical, I try to step in unless, again, I feel my other support can just handle it. Now, however, because Mizzy is so flexible and every match is different, I know that sometimes it's okay to break these rules. If the enemy team is divey, I may be more inclined to heal to help my allies that are getting focused, or maybe I want to get Valkyrie faster. If my other support is struggling a lot, maybe I need to stick closer to react faster. There is definitely a difference between a player who heal bots because they think that's what support is, versus someone who does it occasionally because they know it's the right move in that specific scenario, although even then there is a good chance you can push damage boost a little bit. It sounds obvious, but minimising your deaths really is the main key here. If you have 0, 1 or 2 deaths in 10 minutes, you can easily get 2000 or even 3000 damage amplified and a ton of healing with a 50-50 offensive-defensive beam ratio. I actually really like something that Venta brought up in one of their videos, which is to aim to see yourself in the kill feed as an assist icon as much as possible, because that can be a good indicator of contribution. With the matchmaker being kinda wonky, I had a few games where my Sojourn was incredibly cracked, like pretty much able to solo a team fight by herself, while our other DPS and tank were just kinda terrible. Literally all they had to do was stay alive long enough for Sojourn to carry, but even that was a huge struggle. I remember hard pocketing at Sojourn because she was doing so good while looking at my other allies and getting kinda tilted. In reality, I shouldn't have fallen into that us versus them mindset and just help them out a bit more. If our Sigma pushed a little far forward, maybe I should have tried to help him instead of just rolling my eyes at him from 20 meters away. Okay, so confession. At some point a few weeks back, I had a really nasty losing streak. I ended up going like 3 wins, 15 losses, and dropped 4 ranks, from Masters 4 to Diamond 2. I had multiple games in a row where I felt like I had no impact, where my team was just kinda terrible, which then made me play like trash, and I would carry that shitty attitude into other matches. I then had games where my team would make tiny, recoverable mistakes, and that would tilt me into making huge mistakes that lost fights or even rounds because I would just immediately write a match off. It's like, hey, I've already lost 10 in a row, might as well lose 11, right? Which is a really just shit attitude to have. Like you, your teammates aren't going to play perfectly, and either you can resent them for it and go nowhere, or you can adapt, even if it means sometimes playing in a way that isn't completely optimal to you. Although, obviously, this can only go so far, especially if your teammates are dying, I don't know, it's spawn, or are just completely out of position, but hey, that falls under flexibility as well, right? Moving on to point number two, and I already brought this up in a different video, but Mercy's healing is so, so good at staggering allies, and it is crucial to be aware of this. It can easily lose you a game without being obvious, because it feels like you're doing the right thing. I mean, you're healing, that's one of your jobs, right? I feel like Mercy mains are in this really awkward position, especially ones in mid to low ranks, because you're gonna have fights where you do not want to keep your ally alive. You want them to drop so your team can regroup faster, but if you just let them die, they're gonna think you're throwing, and they're gonna get angry at you. If your team starts losing a fight when there's 40 or so seconds left, you really need to be aware of your next actions, especially when one less tank means one less player that can absorb damage while pushing forward to touch. 
Also, I am partially convinced they made the percentage ticking King of the Hill faster for Overwatch 2 because my god does that one keep tripping me up. But yeah, in fights that are definitely lost, please consider damage boosting your teammates instead of healing them so they die faster, while also potentially getting a bit more ult charge out of it, especially when there's less than a minute on the clock. Moving on to point number three. Oh my god, I have fought with Mercy's Resurrect so much. I really don't know if I like it in 5v5. So during season two, I went through a patch in Low Masters where I was reviewing my games and it hit me that genuinely most of my deaths were during or after my Resurrects. And it's not like I was going for them in front of the enemy team or out in the open. Generally, I thought I could get away with them. The thing is though, having one less tank on your team means less potential protection, but what people forget is that it also means that it's easier for enemies to push past the rest of your allies to get to you. This is especially an issue when Roadhog is meta, which he was during Season 2. I also realised that because I was having issues getting Resurrect off during fights, I was more inclined to go for them before and after fights where they're usually less impactful. For example, if my team is attacking King's Row and Roadhog drops here, generally I won't res him unless we have picks on the enemy team or the clock is really low. If I do res him and Anna gets immediately sniped, we can't push in anyway, but my ability is down. If I do res him and my team makes a good push, but then someone dies, well, now I can't res when it would bring my team an advantage. When I was stuck in a bad headspace, I just didn't care about any of that. I just wanted to stop holding onto my ability for minutes at a time. Being more conservative with reses, being smarter about it, and tracking fights even harder is what I immediately started working on, because I knew my rank wouldn't move if I didn't. Being able to tell when a fight is still winnable after you've lost one or more allies, versus knowing when to back out and regroup is one of the most complex Overwatch skills to learn. The answer will change from fight to fight, however I think it's worth keeping in mind that one big strength of Mercy's healing now is its low effort consistency. There will be disadvantaged fights where just keeping your allies stable with healing and confirming kills with damage boost will be enough to offset a missing player. Rather than going for a risky res and dying to an enemy you didn't account for, sometimes it is just better or enough to keep everyone else up until your ally returns. Also, learning that there's a lot of mercy mains in Grandmaster that only get between 4 and 5 reses per 10 minutes was honestly really comforting to hear and one of the biggest driving forces behind me getting my shit together. Moving on to point number 4, get comfortable with a hero that isn't Mercy, and preferably not Moira either, then get comfortable with their utility. Personally, I picked up Kiriko and Zenyatta. I fully believe that Mercy is flexible enough to be viable at all ranks with carry potential, but once you hit low masters, you're gonna start playing with other Mercy one tricks a lot more often, while also hitting the point where Moira's lack of utility becomes more noticeable. At that sort of rank, sure, it is possible to autopilot and heal bot your way to victory because you're not comfortable using that character's damage, but it does get harder and it's not really something you want to rely on. That's also not to say that Moira is bad or unplayable or anything like that, but if the enemy team is destroying you with anti-nades that you can't cleanse, or if their Zenyatta is putting the funny purple baseball on your tank and just not letting them play the game, well, Moira just doesn't really interact with any of that. All I'm trying to say is, it never hurts to have a couple of options, you know? So those four points are the main things I wanted to bring up, but I have a few other thoughts as well. One thing I was going to reiterate is that I feel like Mercy TikToks and Mercy montages make it seem like your positioning always has to be very flashy with lots of darting about, when in reality sometimes it's just very simple and boring. Sometimes you press one button from behind a wall and that's it, but I feel like most players know this after the GA nerfs. Another thing that's worth doing is identifying your win condition and what your team is weak against. So for example, if your DPS are struggling, do you have a tank with an ultimate that can consistently win a fight? If so, could it be worth giving them extra attention so they get their ult faster? A good example of this is Ramatra, as keeping him up through his ultimate can often be an easy fight winner, especially at mid to low ranks. Also remember that Nanoblade is pretty good at keeping Mercy in check because she is often ran with a support that cannot counter it easily. Lastly, I also think it's worth examining matches where you're playing Mercy and the enemy team is not running her. But yeah, that's basically all from me. I know the things I've mentioned will be incredibly basic and obvious to some players, but I still thought they were worth talking about. Sometimes it feels like content creators are put on pedestals, either by themselves or by viewers, when at the end of the day, we're all just normal people. Well, most of us anyway. Actually, let's not get stuck on this, let's just move right on. There's a reason why I try to be positive and understanding while intentionally not branding myself as a PMA content creator, because I don't want to pointlessly burden myself with unrealistic expectations. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video since it's a little different from my normal stuff. Feel free to like and subscribe and have a nice day.